I welcome you all my panelists. And uh, this was one such topic I was looking forward to discuss. And uh, this seems very, very interesting and trendy. Blue tick. I'm not too sure. I am for, for sure not a blue tick holder. And, uh, but these ladies are. So let's hear her. And uh, what are some of these strategies? What are some of the factors that actually impacting their business growth? That is what actually we are going to discuss. Before we actually get deeper into our strategies part of it, we will get to know what these wonderful women entrepreneurs do and what their ventures are. Can we start from Nikita? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Nikita, and I'm the founder of the brand Winston Electronics. So um, the aim is to disrupt the salon industry, and we are creating products which are uh, tech-driven and uh, for beauty which make customers not go to the salon and do the services at their home, at their ease, at their own time. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm Harini Sivakumar. Um, I run a skincare brand called Earth Rhythm. Um, Earth Rhythm is a, you know, is a modern skincare brand that focuses more on sustainability in terms of you know, how a consumer can actually um, safely use products while you know, continuing to follow a sustainable lifestyle. Um, the company has raised about 70 crores in total and we are a growth stage startup at the moment. Um, that's about it. I think uh, happy to be here and share my thoughts about how Blue Tech has actually helped or not helped at all. <laughs> good to know, good to know. Along with your venture, do also tell us your, your story about your entrepreneurship. How has it all started? Okay, mine is going to be really long but I'll keep it really short. I'll try to keep it short. So. Um, I, I studied to be a banker, by, I'm a banker by profession, but I never really worked in a banking sector at all. Um, got married very early, got married when I was 22, had a child when I was 23, straight up, uh, straight up being a homemaker for about eight years, no corporate experience, never worked in a company, but today running a company which is valued at 250 crores. So I think um, the journey of building a company for me uh, started, you know, right from my kitchen, right? Um, I'm very proud to say that Earth Rhythm was a kitchen brand. Uh, you know, to be very honest, it was a passion project that actually, uh, today when I go to events, I talk about product market fit, minimum viable product, NPDs and all of these things. But, un you know, in my journey of building a brand, none of these even existed. I've n I, I, really, I really didn't know what a minimum viable product or a product market fit was, but, all of these things, we do it uh, knowingly or unknowingly in our journey as an entrepreneur, right? It's just that we don't give labels to these, but we have done it. Um, I think these over these years, I think I started the company uh, in 2019. Uh, from 2019 to 2023, today um, we've grown heaps and bounds, and that's also because um, I think we've made a lot of mistakes and we've learned from our mistakes. We've we've changed a lot of things. We've changed so many things. I've changed the logo three times in these four years. <laughs> I've, I've done all crazy things. Um, and I think what really uh, works or how a company scales is when you know what is going wrong, where at the right time. I think that's extremely critical and I think I'll stop there uh, and I'll let the others introduce themselves. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Nidhi Katiar and um, I'm an influencer, a beauty influencer and I uh, I have a makeup brand called Cuffs and Lashes. When I started Cuffs and Lashes, it was a passion project and I wanted to create products that would just perform like any other high-end product, but uh, they are affordable. Uh, I just want to reach everybody uh, irrespective of their skin tone, so inclusivity was a very important factor when I started creating my products. And um, I take proud in it that um, some of our base uh, products that we have are not just good in terms of quality, but the range that we offer in terms of skin tones is uh, what I'm, I feel very, very proud of. So, yeah. Good to know, good to know. Akriti. Hi, everyone. I'm Akriti Rawal. I'm the co-founder of House of Chicken Curry. Uh, House of Chicken Curry is an e-commerce D2C brand where we're taking the unorganized sector of, uh, of the chicken curry embroidery art form and we're taking in it a more organized solution through uh, an e-commerce website. It's been two and a half years into my journey. My mother is my co-founder. We both founded the business from the basement of our home, just the two of us, two and a half years back. Today, we're very proud to have a team of 100 people. 
and uh, most of which my mom handles because she was a homemaker for 22 years of her life and she got back to her journey and her career after 22 years with me but i think she had all those skills in her all that all the while she was a homemaker and our most recent milestone has been coming on shark tank season 2 which was in january and we got funded by aman gupta and piyush bansal and currently we're in a phase, uh, phase of our business where uh, we're obviously like you know post shark tank adding new people to our team we're coming up with new challenges every day so yeah i mean that's pretty much what's going on with us and we're still learning a lot every day like you said we're making a lot of new mistakes and uh, yeah i mean figuring our way out still still very new into this very lovely one thing which is common between all of them is starting it from passion this is common between all of them now let's talk about the actual thing we are here to talk uh, that is that is blue tick i'm not too sure about how strongly or how confidently you take it but what different actually it made in your life in your professional life in your personal branding we will then go on to how it actually helped your business anybody would like to take the first maybe actually don't hold on that's okay that's okay my my point of saying it don't let's let's take it let's take it this way my my point of saying this is personal branding how how do you look at personal branding making good impact to your business growth uh, i think my whole brand is established on personal branding so i have been doing content creation since 2015 right and i was very passionate about makeup how the like reviewing products every new product that is in the market and then from there i created trust relatability with my audience i created that community so personal branding plays a very important role in at least my brand and i feel uh, in today's uh, era the way you can talk about your pro product, the way you can uh, be so sure about what it does and what it doesn't do, no other person would be able to be that compassionate about whatever you are selling, right? And that is very, very important. Uh, you, if you believe in your product, other people are bound to believe in it. And um, my whole uh, journey of being a creator then turning into an entrepreneur has played a very important role in how Right now, my brand is uh, placed in the market. I very much connect with Nidhi, actually. You know, I started my journey like 10 years back. And uh, that time, you know, I started selling beauty products. That is how I started my journey as an entrepreneur. And there was no term as influencer marketing. There was no Nika. There was no other platform selling cosmetics. And I was like, how am I going to do it? Like, you know, online. There's no personal touch. Nobody can see. How is the color payoff going to be? How is it going to look on different skin tones? And that's when I started to become my own, uh, you know, kind of face of the brand. And that is how I started. And I think I realized today also, this is like so important, the trust and credibility that you can bring as a founder, not just stating that, okay, your face is there as a founder, but also like, you know, connecting with the audience. You know, a lot of brands today are like, you know, we want to know the audience. Where is it coming from? What are their tastes? What do they like? But it's also very important for the audience to know that, you know, who are you as a founder and you know what are the things about you so it's like a mutual connection between the two of you and it's really important and it's a very deeper connection it's like you know humanizing your brand basically and uh, yeah it's more or less you know what a brand face does to your uh, brand like a celebrity face you can be that face of your brand and that is what is helping us a lot the personal branding bringing the touch with the audience that's right the conviction can drive a lot of customers for you when it comes to personal branding and your business growth i i, I missed mentioning it in the uh, before starting the panel nana rohel uh, who is the founder of vanity wagon was supposed to moderate the session but she got really really unwell and I had to replace her. So we're missing you if you are, if you are watching us. Uh, getting back to our uh, the topic, uh, uh, Harini, yeah, yeah, Harini. Uh, it seems like because I am coming from a very very opposite uh, take that uh, because I'm not so active on Instagram. Though I yesterday made a lot of friends on Instagram, <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's that's really difficult to ma I mean manage. I really, really struggle in that area. How do you do that? That's my question next to you. But uh, what's your different take on it? So I think uh, I'll start with telling you that today a celebrity influencer charges anywhere between three to five lakhs for just one reel, right? 
that's that's bare minimum so that's the power of personal branding today i'm going to start with that and that's because i think each one today because of social media boom and all of that people have the ability to reach to hundreds of audience with good content you know it can be anything it can be just transition reels and that is also enough for people to get hooked on to right um having said that for entrepreneurs like me what blue tech means whether it really works whether it's even needed i think i started my journey completely as a facebook driven business i think back in the day when i started in 2015 as a home grown venture instagram wasn't that popular facebook was more popular than instagram so i started selling through facebook pages right and on, on, at that point what really worked was storytelling right today i think what is more important more than even you know celebrities you know talking about things what really works is storytelling what a, what, what is all this content creation it's all about storytelling right when i went out in open and told people that hey this is this is me this is me you know clicking raw images showing you how i make a product how this comes out how this looks and this is how it is i still remember there was one incident which actually went viral which made earth rhythm popular back in the day and that was also again a fact of realism right um there was a customer who bought a product for 500 rupees um she wrote a very nasty comment on instagram saying that uh, the label was not stuck in a very aesthetic manner and she wanted a full refund and all of that while well while at that time i think you know we had just started off and since my son has a disability he has down syndrome so i used to work with a lot of children with disabilities or adults with disabilities who used to help me in labeling and i used to pay them stipend for it so um because she made it public she went on social media and she posted it i also you know very politely made a video of the you know the the team that i work with and i posted on saying that i we really apologize i am we value your money but at the same time please i want you to see the effort that went behind in sticking that label while we'll we we'll give you that 500 rupees fully back with full heart but you should know the value that went behind in creating that product i think that went viral and people started appreciating what real stories mean i think today nobody can carry earth rhythm the way i carry it around right personal branding i i carry you know earth rhythm pen earth rhythm bag earth rhythm t-shirt i want everybody to see it that transforms into a phase where people start following me and that's when the blue tick means something to even people just merely having a blue tick means nothing you tell stories you create impact you 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 start building a perception in consumers mind connecting with them and then all of these things are just you know um, a cherry on the cake uh, to just endorse that actually she is someone who is inspirational people follow her for a particular reason and that's why blue tick is even helpful to be very honest that's my take on it i i completely and very very uh, honestly agree authenticity and honesty plays a very very vital role in this uh the more the more you open and honest are you will get connected with many many people before we get, go to nidhi i will just uh, like to add to it uh nidhi also has a very very popular vlog channel and i'm sure she can talk about it uh, given the point that harini mentioned being honest being very very personal and open transparent with your audience can actually help you yeah so as you mentioned the vlog channel i just started it last year and uh, uh, and shorts also just recently rolled out so i didn't know what to put on a vlog channel as a short so one fine morning i was just packing uh, my son's tiffin and it just clicked me why don't i show people what i pack for him because i struggle every single day what should i put in his tiffin and i just posted three four uh, shorts out of it and all of a sudden it was everywhere and i kind of created a trend a lot of people started uh, creating similar kinds of videos i stopped doing it because uh, you know social media hate is also something that gets to you at some point of time but the thing is that um, as you mentioned honesty and uh, authentic authenticity they they do play a very important role uh, when you are creating content or you are creating product also if that honesty is not there in your product um, you can't sell it right and um, as she mentioned uh, my story is kind of very similar to what hers is um i started 
my content creation journey in 2015, which is like a really long time from now. And in 2016, I left my job, took content creation full time because I thought, oh, this is such a nice career path and so different from what everybody is doing. And in 2017, I realized, okay, it's not paying me well. And I left my job. I need money to, you know, uh, run everything. And that's when I started Cuffs and Lashes, which was just an e-commerce platform. So I used to talk about the products that I was selling. And I would not just sell anything. So I have to first try out the product on myself and then talk about those products and then sell it. So there was like a lot of things going on. And the trust that I started building from there on finally converted into Cuffs and Lashes, the makeup brand. Good to know. And uh, as Harini mentioned about uh, wearing an earth rhythm t-shirt, I can see Akriti wearing a chicken curry kurta because <laughs> she runs a brand called House of Chicken Curry. Uh, what's your take on this? Yeah, so I'm wearing a chicken curry shirt. Right. It's not a kurta. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So yeah, for us, I think um, um, I would say that like the blue tick just came post Shark Tank, right? We had applied six times before because our team was just really excited. Okay, we won the blue tick. Also for us, uh, what it represented before Shark Tank was we were in a very unorganized industry. So when we started two and a half years back, the industry was very unorganized. There were not a lot of e-commerce players, but now there's every like there's every day a new chicken curry brand coming up, right? Like the industry is in itself growing post COVID. It went online, so. Uh, it became important at a point for us that you know we didn't want like to be impersonated we wanted to protect the brand when we were new we didn't know like you know if people see our page and someone who's made a page with a similar name so we just wanted it for that purpose for the longest time uh, and I think uh, when we got it we obviously were very excited but life doesn't change I think uh, it represents trust and authenticity but that is just something it represents the actual trust and authenticity is actually built by everything else you do it's built by all the actions you take internally. It's the customer service. It's post-customer, sat uh, you know, purchase satisfaction. It's the way your team communicates, talks to them. It's every touch point of the brand, right? Even also the content you put out builds that trust. So I feel that that blue tick is just something uh, that uh, just shows people that, okay, you're authentic, but the actual authenticity from your most loyal customers will come with all the other actions you take along with it. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's all exciting, but the real work goes behind. Also, one more point that I want to make is Bluetick is not just about a uh, customer-centric reason why you need to really have, you know, a verified profile or something. Uh, one part is, I think I would like to split it into two ways, right? One is customer-centric and the other one is company-centric, right? In terms of customer-centric, uh, obviously your customers get a lot of trust, confidence in your brand, in the founder. When it is a verified, you know, profile, they get a lot more credibility from the consumer's perspective. The other side, a very important side, is investor perspective, right? Uh, in my journey, so let's take the case of, you know, a couple of years ago in our father's time, previous generations, it was mostly family-owned businesses. They never went to institutional funding or anything. So they never had the, you know, uh, the, the mindset of actually creating a personal branding to actually go out and seek money, right? But in today's scenario, funding is something which is like a part of part and parcel of your startup journey, which means you really need to have that personal branding very well done to go into the market to even speak to an investor. In my case, I was touched, I was very lucky, I should say, that even for the seed round, I had almost eight or 10 term sheets sitting on my table and investors fighting who will fund me. And that happened because I was very active on social media. People knew who Harini was, what the voice was, what the vision was. I kept on talking, telling people what I wanted. And that reached the right set of people the way it has to and they, they saw the passion. So what I'm trying to say over here is it's not just always about just building a brand. It's also about how a, as a founder, you try to, you know, drive the brand vision and show yourself. Today, Vinita from Sugar Cosmetics is a brand face, right? Um, you know, Ghazal is a brand face of Mama Earth. Let's, you know, in the past, if you see Richard Branson was the brand, brand face of Virgin Airlines. Vijay Malia was the brand face of Kingfisher. We all know these founders as the brand face itself. And I think that's very critical in terms of, you know, when you're trying to build a business. This actually, With the, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, One go for it, point. please. So she told about the consumer perspective. She told about the investor perspective. There's also the Instagram perspective. You know, having a blue tick from what I've heard, if you have it, the Instagram algorithm plays differently. Like your visibility, your uh, recommendations, like, you know, when somebody is searching for it, it's like higher. But having said that, blue tick is, of course, like, uh, just like a small milestone, especially now when it's like, you know, come out and there's a paid version of it. And um, yeah, but I think blue ticks, like there are several milestones that we have achieved as a brand in Winston. Shark Tank being the greatest one, like, you know, getting funded by Anupam and Vinita. But personal branding, I think because I started my journey like really uh, long back, what I realized was when I went out somewhere, like, you know, not just in my own city, but also outside India, I felt like, you know, the customers knew me there. Like, you know, it's very surprising. Every time I'm traveling, I meet someone and there's an encounter where somebody comes up to me and, you know, talks to me and knows me telling that, okay, I know you as a brand face. And what I do is like, you know, it could have been very easy for the customer to just, you know, see and leave, not coming up to me. But I feel if they have made an effort and, you know, we make so much effort as a brand to do after sales and whatever things we are doing. But in terms of personal branding, I make sure that, you know, I always have some kind of product with me. Um, so if I'm traveling, I would just give it out to them, not just as a means of exchange, but it's out of respect because that person has come up to me. And I feel like this bonding is way beyond blue tick for me. That's true. I was coming to this point you mentioned about AI. So with coming uh, with the incoming of uh, advanced technologies in AI, she mentioned about a changing in algorithm, algorithm that right. actually can uh, disturb what many, many entrepreneurs or otherwise have built till now. Uh, Nidhi, would you like to add about, uh, to, to this with your story? I, I, as I mentioned, I don't have a blue tick. And okay, I, okay. I, no, 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 there's a, the, no, no, a there's a, there's a reason to it. So, I always wanted to have it, but now that it has been rolled out as a paid version, I don't want it anymore. Because now, with, as like we talked about it, the authenticity, True. I bought it, I, I haven't earned it. So um, even, if the, even if people are buying that blue tick and Instagram does push out the content, like I've seen people on my feed who I am not even following or I'm not even subscribed to. So that does uh, become like a, a little bit disheartening because you put a lot of efforts into creating every piece of content that you are doing out there. And then there are people who have just bought it and then pushed. So, but then again, I, I have, if, you're, if you're doing your job uh, with all honesty, you, you will get there, right? And uh, I feel in personal branding, um, me being reachable is also very, very, um, uh, important because if as I sh as she mentioned like uh, people meeting you yeah. people would meet me and then tell me ki nidhi you should make this product yeah, yeah? Right. so <laughs> uh, I get free insights of what I should be creating like for you I sh saw your uh, Shark Tank episode and uh, you specifically mentioned that Winston came into existence because people were talking about certain products that exactly. they want right so these things AI will not take away from you yeah. The organic things AI cannot take away from you. There are many, many brands and entrepreneurs I personally admire and uh, look up to who are doing really well in C2C. I call it content to commerce. And uh, what they are doing is what they are using uh, as their uh, weapon is stories, their personal stories, their stories from customers, their stories from businesses, and uh, anybody or everybody they meet in their lives. So content to commerce is actually what is working right now in absolute uh, market as an absolute marketing strategy. Uh, what would you suggest, Akriti, in terms if if we talk about marketing strategy in a very very positive manner using your personal branding? How do you uh, synchronize both? So uh, I mean, we're a content to commerce company from the start, right? Like we just like got funded and we were always bootstrapped before that. So. Uh, for us, like now we've scaled in the last, I would say, nine to ten months where we've increased the spends on say ads and everything, but we were always content to commerce because we didn't have the money. Everything was being put into say buying inventory, also building the team also. So we didn't have too much money to just scale up the spends one fine day. So we had to rely on what is con what you call content today because we wanted people to just come on our page, on Instagram page for free, and like, you know, that's something which was in our control. That's the only thing we could control. So for the longest time for one 
and a half, I think, years about, uh, and we still focus a lot on content, even though we've increased our spends. I think that is what uh, made us in the first place. That is uh, where we use the personal branding stories about our team, our, or like, so, you know, we did a lot of reels on my mom, and that seemed to resonate with our audience a lot. And then we just made us this face. We're like, okay, now you are like the new, you know, model for the brand. We're going to shoot all the reels on you because people love you, right? Yeah. Because your story is so much more relatable coming back to work, and maybe you are the person we need to be shooting on. And we started shooting all these like fun, cool, like transition reels also on her and you know, the people seem to be liking that. So sometimes what you think and you keep trying and then you, the audience tells you what they actually want to see. So for us, I think that was the marketing strategy for the longest time that you, you know, build that organic authenticity and content because it's cost effective in the first few years. And we still like rely on that a lot. And I still tell everyone that especially if you're a D2C brand, utilize a platform like Instagram. Like, you know, today not utilizing Instagram, even shorts now a lot. We've also just started posting videos on that. But all these short video formats, they are giving you a reach and accessibility to a wider audience without spending any money. So please try that first, you know, before you start thinking of, okay, let me get into performance and spend like, uh, I don't know how many, how many million bucks, just like start with what's free and, you know, be consistent in that. And that will definitely work out. It won't work out the first day, but one viral reel can <laughs> help you a lot. <laughs> And of course, consistency is the key there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's other side to it. Uh, there's a latest study that has come up. Around 60% of these tag holders of verified people have uh, fake followers. Yeah. Any comments on that too? Yes, <laughs> a lot of comments on that. <laughs> so I think... Uh, so I think today's consumers are also viewers are also very smart, right? They're getting smarter by the day. So I think we, we've also learned to find out, you know, social media is so powerful, like I said, it teaches us to identify those channels which are, you know, having fake followers because there's something called engagement, right? Um, when you post something on social media, consumers are now having so much transparency that they can actually see whether the page has engagement or not. And um, while, you know, from a very, you know, a, a wider lens, it will look like it's a beautiful piece of, you know, cake that, that is there for you to grab. But when you go closer to it, you, you start realizing it's not real. So I think uh, it's always better to probably figure out what is trending at the moment and write the crust along with it rather than probably looking for shortcuts. I think that's, it's been there, right? It's there not just in social media, everywhere, wherever you go, there are loopholes where you can break ways. But I think like, again, the previous point that you said, consistency is the key. So unless you create content and for example, I'll give you in, in my case, I'm not someone who uses makeup or skincare very diligently. Unfortunately, I'm a founder of a skincare brand, but I'm the last person to use any skincare product at all, right? That's honesty. <laughs> <laughs> that's honesty, right? So my page, if you go, unlike these two girls here, it will not have me doing, you know, 10 step skincare <laughs> regime. No, but I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome, right? You go to my page, you will see tons and tons of videos, educational videos about how a woman came out of her comfort zone, having a child with disability, came back to work, right? Now that pushes people, a lot of people who have, you know, children with disabilities, Down syndrome, reach out to me, talk That's to me, right. figure out, connect me to groups, or they come and they, we do a lot of meetups, Down syndrome meetups. My connect is very different on social media. It not necessarily needs to be exactly to your brand. What you're doing by, you know, going on social media is connecting with consumers and giving them realistic stories where you are comfortable in doing. Now that will start building stories on its own. So I think that's how you start building personal branding, you know, more realistically rather than actually taking the shortcut. That's right. Before we actually close, one final question to Nidhi. Uh, uh, when everybody like you and everybody sitting on a panel has put in a lot of efforts, like she just mentioned, in maintaining that, that flow, that content, that maybe with any good intention, but that effort is going in. Uh, what happens when somebody do that negative comment, negative impression? How do you manage that? How do you handle it? So, uh, first thing that I actually tell myself is that I can't make everybody happy. That's true. That's true. Right? And then there is an option of blocking people <laughs> and deleting their comments. <laughs> so, I make most use out of those things. But having said that, uh, once in a while, people will bring you down on social That's media right. like anything. And I think at that point, it's best to be silent. 
because the moment you start interacting with it, it blows up like anything. So over a period of time, I've realized if somebody is throwing dirt on me, I have to just keep myself calm and just, you know, compose myself. I don't have to give them any time of my uh, own, which I can, you know, utilize in something, creating something beautiful. So yeah, I I'd stay away from them. And uh, if I get a lot of negative comments, I probably don't read them. And you have to develop that thick skin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I completely Stop. have a different take here. See, I tell you, any publicity is good publicity even if it is negative, make your negative publicity viral, right? Minimalist, when they came into the market, they were bashed to glory saying that they are a dupe of ordinary. But today, minimalist is 200 crores in ARR profitable because of the negative publicity, right? Go on. So I think my take over here is, let's, whenever you have a negative comment coming in, right? I mean, that's my take, right? I g generally, I give back, I talk. I talk to people and I tell them that, hey, this is negative publicity. And I, I try to make it, I try to blow it out of proportion because I want more people to read it. No more. Because negativity is something which easily catches people than positivity, right? Um, so when you actually try to take your brand in a different way, this is also a kind of a marketing technique, in my honest opinion, in you know running a brand in the last four years. When there is a negative comment, my entire social media team is working on you know how to make it viral. <laughs> there can be there can be many ways in everybody's uh, their own manner. They can talk about talk to them, engage with them, or choose to be silent. Uh, I'm sure everybody is enjoying this discussion as much as I'm doing. But Aditya, we need to call it a close. Thank you so much, panelists, for joining in. Thank you, thank you for being a good audience.